In my previous video, I asked the question, um, what's the difference between the coercive power of Hitler's charisma and that of Gandhi? Personally, I believe that they both, in a sense, coerced their followers. Um, now, I think, however, that there were important differences between the two. First of all, let me say that I don't uh, admire Gandhi or make a god of him the way some people do. Um, a lot of the British people, who were sort of his political opponents in the 1920s and 30s, said that, yes, he is a saint and all that sort of thing, and he does tend to practice what he preaches, but uh, he's also a jackal. He's also a very sly fox who knows exactly how to manipulate people and how to get what he wants out of them. He's a masterful politician with a good sense of timing and publicity. So, okay, I don't... I'm not trying to say that Gandhi, again, was a saint here, or that Hitler, as a matter of fact, was Satan himself. I compared him to Sauron before, but I don't think that that's really all that true. What Hitler did was he manipulated things that were inside of his followers already. Um, he would exacerbate the sort of negative things uh, that pre-exist in our character, such as too much pride, too much anger, too much greed, that sort of thing. Whereas Gandhi would appeal to that which is higher. So that's one important um, difference, if you ask me. Um, Gandhi was essentially, his message was for everybody, and that uh, everyone on earth, really, every human being, every conscious sentient being that was capable of grasping his meaning. It was an enormous self-help or self-improvement course for the whole human race. Anyone who could understand his message could benefit from it self-improvement. Um, there are no devils, he said, except for those running around inside of all of our hearts. And that's where all of our battles need to be fought. And he practiced what he preached. Rather than threatening or frightening or shaming anyone into, uh, into um, doing as he said, he would fast. He would do other things to consciously put pressure on his uh, followers, but by um, engaging in activities that required enormous self-discipline and enormous capacity to suffer. Whatever suffering I'm inflicting upon you, my followers, I am willing to inflict on myself in an even greater degree. Um, if you remember, if you were ever in the army, who were the sergeants that you respected the most, and who were the sergeants you disrespected the most? The sergeant that you disrespected was simply, uh, because I said so, you little puke, you do as I say. Um, whereas the sergeant who you respected the most was uh, the guy who believed that he needed to earn your respect. It wasn't just enough that he had three hooks on his... Uh, um, on his arm. The main thing was to him that was just a difference in job function and a tiebreaker if there was a disagreement. You do as I say if there's a disagreement. But ultimately um, he believes that he, the sergeant would sort of see himself as someone who's there to serve as it were all of his followers, to improve all of his followers, whereas the jerk sergeant was the guy who was just there to lord it over you. Um, <clears throat> same thing as the uh, the Gandhi-Hitler comparison. Um, Hitler ultimately saw his followers as his playthings to be jettisoned whenever they failed him. At the end of the war, he decided that because everything, this idea, this Third Reich that he had planned didn't work out, that it was all his followers' fault, and that he was that, that they weren't going to survive him. He was going to commit suicide, and he was going to force them to commit suicide. Um, he also believed in, or he didn't seem to believe in, uh, self-restraint in any way at all. Especially, don't restrain the negative emotions. Um, they uh, consciously used uh, sexual propaganda to get people to uh, propagate, to produce more Aryans. They used um, hatred as a means of formulating national policy, nationalism, and insane pride. Um, 
Hitler used rage in all of his speeches. Those bad people. Scapegoating was something that was absent from Gandhi's uh, um, Gandhi's tactical bag of tricks. Uh, but scapegoating, uh, without scapegoating, Hitler's entire philosophy would have been impossible. He had to have scapegoats. There had to be others over there that he could blame everything on. There had to be people he could fight against. There had to be people he could subjugate to turn into slaves. Gandhi's philosophy didn't require any of that. Um, Hitler was notorious for his refusal to restrain his anger. And uh, there's an anecdote where Knut Hamsen, uh, the Norwegian author, went to visit Hitler and said, I'd like you to go easy on some, some of my friends here in Norway. And Hitler flew into a rage that lasted three days on the impudent impudence of this lowly author to ask him things like this. Whereas uh, Gandhi um, understood that things like pride, rage, greed, lust, all these sort of, all the seven deadly sins are things to be conquered, are things to be fought in that uh, uh, the, the, the battle that he said should rage in all of our hearts. Whereas Hitler said, no, 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 no use all of these things because they're useful in controlling the world around you. So, I don't think that Gandhi in as much rec uh, relied upon guilt, although there was an element of that, a heavy element of it, in terms of dealing with, uh, say, for example, the British public to put pressure on their politicians. There was a lot of guilt there. Um, but to uh, he rarely used it on his own followers. He said, Stop being a slave and imagine what you can be if you follow me, or if you follow yourself, ultimately. Um, but uh, Hitler said, stop being slaves, follow me, and I'll make the world your slaves. And uh, I would say uh, that the manipulation that Hitler used was using people's weaknesses against them or people's, using people's weaknesses as a means to motivate them. Gandhi, on the other hand, used people's strengths to control his people. Not against them, by the way. He didn't use people's strengths against them. If they went on a killing spree and he fasted and said, I'm going to kill myself if you guys don't smarten up, I don't see that as using coercion or guilt against oneself, against anyone. It's a fine line, but I believe that that line exists. You lead by example. You say, I don't believe in violence, therefore I'm going to make myself the ultimate scapegoat here. I'm going to take all the evils of the world onto myself and suffer the penalties for all the bad things in the world. I'm not going to say it's all you morons faults for deciding to go on a killing spree and slaughtering all the Muslims said I'm going to uh, accept responsibility for all of this and I'm going to pay the penalty that's an ancient tradition in India this idea that austerity gives you enormous power over people the the yogi who sits there and fasts until you know he doesn't eat or drink or do anything for 30 days and suddenly he has such inner power that the gods have to obey him. That's an ancient Indian tradition. And in, in the West, our tradition of the charismatic rabble-arouser was one that Hitler played to perfection. Um, getting people whipped up into a frenzy of indignation and rage. Um, so, yes, there are important distinctions between these two people. There are important distinctions between someone who leads by manipulating your own good uh, inner aspects against you and to someone who actually uh, manipulates you towards the better. And again, I see um, Hitler encouraging everyone to an outer struggle and Gandhi egging people on to be something better inside. I'm not trying to uh, raise Gandhi up here to the level of a god. I think that I have a fairly realistic view as to what he actually was. But I use him as an example of somebody 
who can actually use the power of his own personality to affect uh, other people in a positive way. It can be done. But the person who is doing it cannot use shortcuts. You can't coerce people in a negative way. You can't use pain and uh, little guilt zaps to get people to do as you want. You have to say, you can be better than this. And I'm going to set an example of betterness. I'm going to take enormous um, responsibility to do this onto myself. I'm going to forsake my private life, essentially, in order to uh, make all of you people better. Whereas Hitler sort of forsook any private life, and he said, I'm going to give you all kinds of goodies in this world. Um, I'm going to lift you up from bondage and turn you into the master. Don't uh, suppress your rage. Ride it. Use it to your advantage. It sounds like the good side and the dark side of the Force from Star Wars, doesn't it? In many ways, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> Thank you.